I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. I'm Arthur Boyle of Performance Appraisal Services. We're residential real estate appraisers with a company founded in 1994 by Mike Gianelli and I in the basement of my house in Malden. We've since grown to have offices in Malden and Pembroke. We serve the Eastern Mass counties, including Cape Cod. A good client for us is an attorney or a private landowner or a private property owner who's going through a probate process or a divorce division of property. Call us at 781-293-6900. Ask for Arthur Boyle or Amanda Boyle Grazioso. Our first name is Performance. Today. <laughs> Today is May 22nd, um, 2017. Um, all board members are present. Uh, PAC TV and Pembroke News are also filming once again. Lisa Cullity has advised the board that she um, has suddenly taken ill, so she will not be here. Um, currently, please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through an audio recording which will be used to ensure an accurate record of the proceedings produced in the minutes of the meeting. All comments made in open session will and are being recorded. With that being said, we have signed payroll as the current sitting board. I would first like to congratulate mm -hmm. Gary Fine on his win um, on the elections for the Board of Health. Um, wise choice for the people of Pembroke. Gary does a very good job. Thank you, Donna. Um, you're welcome. I would like to as roll right into the reorganization of the board. So um, if anybody would like to make a motion. I would like to make a motion to renominate our current chair, Donna Bagney, as chairman for the next calendar year until our elections in May of 2018. I'll second. I abstain. All in favor? Aye. Yes, aye. And for the record, I do abstain. Okay, moving then right along. Um, we don't have anything until 7 o'clock which will be a variance. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, can you address the other board? I'm uh, sorry? We all going to remain the same. Is Mr. Fine going to remain member and I'm going to remain clerk? I believe that, yes. Okay. Do, you, do you make a nomination? I'd like one. to, well, I... I wasn't asking you to, I'd say, is the, does one need to be made for the clerk's position? Yes. All yes. three positions need to be made. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to make a nomination for Gary to stay as the clerk for the Pembroke Board of Health. Do I know a second? I'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Therefore, I would also like to make a motion that Gail McSweeney stay as our current member. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. <laughs> um, we also have, um, starting off this new election and reorg of the board, or non-reorg of the board, um, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting as for May 8th, 2017. Uh, we don't have those. No, we don't. Oh. Oh. Uh, you did to you. email them, them to all of us. I'll just print them out. You can move on to the next thing. Okay. You all, they were in, you, you got them in the email, correct? Yes, I got them. I, I, I did as well. They were all the attachments. Was this the 17 page one? 
No, no we already approved that one. This was the last one that we had. Okay. All right, so still, so we'll move on. Your um, motion still stand. Yeah. Well, my motion stands if if you. Why? Well, you got yeah. You know, we don't have to have them present. I mean, I read. Okay. Them. Okay. 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 I need to you can sign them, right? I'm not sure. You need to review them. Right. Okay. Um. Huh? Pardon me. You want to review them? Yeah. If I could just review it, just real quick. Okay. I, I probably have read it, but I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> well, I would like to give a few minutes for Gail to be able to take a look at that. Um. In the interim, Madam Chair, is um. Let me have just somebody. Yes, um, Webby. Bloom Engineering. Um, no, McGloom. McGloom's mm -hmm. coming in yeah, to yeah. present okay. it, yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah. That's the copy you could sign, right? Mm -hmm. So my motion is still on the floor um, to accept the minutes as written for May 8, 2017. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Great. While we're waiting um, for Hatch Street and um, Shane McGloom, with Lisa being out, could you kind of so enlighten us? Sure. The uh, septic outbreak at the, the three, uh, three public establishments, the commercial ones, uh, the Pembroke Hospital is going to be, you know, a year-long thing. They're moving on. Yep. Uh, I believe that the second one, the field house, is um, moving along, or they're they're still in the they're in the design design phase. Okay, so they are taking the effort to correct yeah. that. Okay. And then uh, I don't know if she got an update this week, but we did get an update last week from the the third one, which was up on Riverside Drive. Mm -hmm. And um, they were still trying to figure out what exactly was going on. They had an overflow, um, so they were pumping the tanks. Um, this is the business though. establishment, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that we were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So that uh, I don't think we've heard from them this week, but you know it's only Monday. This is true. Shannon says either call tomorrow morning, and I'm looking. And I yell at them for not calling Monday morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you, you can do that. Private home, I believe we have, one is Oldham Street. They sent in an engineering plan. They've um, come back. And I, you know, I told them it was back and they had to go before the board. And they said, well, they, they want to add a bedroom, so it's going to go back to engineering. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if um, the people are still living there. Okay. But I believe it's being pumped. If they are, they, they, they said they would keep up with the pumping. Adding a, adding a bedroom, are they? Well, they, they have to be are they the parks? Yeah. They're going to have to perk, too. Yeah, they're going to have to perk. Mm -hmm. So that, I don't think they've called to schedule the perk yet. Um, so that's all called. We have two new ones, one of which I know about, one that I don't know. I just heard that it, there was another one, because she said she went to two houses today. Okay. One is over on Priscilla Drive. And, um, it's a long story, but the house is... It's not necessarily being condemned for... Um, it's going to be condemned for... Half the electrical doesn't work and there's no heat. There was a kitchen fire at one point and nobody fixed it. And uh, so that's going to be closed down. Uh, the person that's living there is related to the owner of the house. He's letting her stay there to give her a break. Uh, Lisa's trying to get her into emergency housing. Is this an elderly person? No. It's not. And there's kids. There's a couple of kids. I think there's a couple of kids. Are they under the age of 17? I believe at least one is. Do you know if there's any mental health issues? Uh, and I think it's a single parent that's just overwhelmed. Okay. And um, doesn't know how to take care of a house. Okay. And the house was had the fire and had the damage before the person left, the, the owner of the house. Just okay, so we've got luck. no heat. We have half electrical yeah. working so with children living in there. Um, so the electric is compromised, so yeah. And the fire in the kitchen. Do we know yeah, what so the owner, of that kitchen? The owner wants to, you know, when she wants she's out, he's just going to get rid of it. He's going to dump it. He's going to plow it over. I think he holds it outright, and he's just going to catch still. 
Okay. So they'll sell it. Yeah. Okay. Um, How imminent that is, you don't. You have no idea. I'm sorry. How imminent that is, you have no idea. Uh, that he'll sell it. He'll sell it as soon as he can, as he can, which means as soon as she gets out. No. Is um, she under any kind of order at this point to not yet. remove? Okay. She's cutting In the some process. Slack, trying to get her into housing instead of just putting her actually on the street. Okay. But. Okay, so I just want to make. But the children, the, the kids are out. The kids are down in Plymouth. Children are gone. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. That is that concerns. That's a big concern. Yeah. Um, especially with the electrical. Um, with combination, if Lisa, our health agent, had, comes to the opinion that the house has to be condemned. We will be asked to put a condemnation. Two things can happen. We can call an emergency board meeting, get more information, or she will call each one of us and explain the complete situation, and she can do a vote over the phone. Mm -hmm. um, that means the house will be taped up. No one will be allowed in there. And if he wants to sell the house as is, <coughs> as long as there's no people living in it. So I know you haven't had a condemnation yet. No. I know Gary well, I, has. I, I, I went prior. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen him mm -hmm. prior yeah. in this. It's office, hard. So. It's hard because it's very it, difficult. it affects people. So, um, but we have to. We have to be extremely conscientious over the well-being of anybody. Okay, and then there was something today after that. Yeah, but she didn't film me. She said she'll email you guys in the morning. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, um, perfect. Status. Okay, um, she's been very busy. Yeah. You actually, I spoke with you several times this week, and you were It was crazy. crazy. It was just, it was just this. Well, we had a problem this morning. The phones weren't working. Mm -hmm. Well, the phones were working, but the email, voicemail wasn't. So I was trying to grab the phone because it, usually if someone's at the window, I don't bother grab. I don't grab the phone because they'll leave a voicemail and I'll call them back. But I couldn't do that because mm -hmm. I voicemails. So um, the phones were ringing in. Everybody wants septic plans. I don't know. Everybody's getting their systems pumps. There's been a lot of, um, like, Mattachesa Street, one of the houses on Mattachesa Street is very popular. Mm -hmm. People call in and want the as built, want to know why it's a condi conditional pass. Mm -hmm. And uh, the market's hot. It's just this mm -hmm. people looking, they hear it's on, they want to see when was the septic put in, how many bedrooms is there, what kind of So do? they're asking these questions over the phone? Yeah. yeah. Some, I, I mean, the window traffic is, mm -hmm. is good. You know, people could Pretty be floor. Because technically... The ones that know what they're looking at? Yeah. Real, realtors should be doing their job and coming in yeah. and well, they're looking always asking at the file. Yeah, you're being faxed this to me. I'm like, no, sorry. <clears throat> okay, good. Yeah. Um, she did have a resident today that wanted to install his own septic. Well, <laughs> that, that was no. Well, that was a no. <laughs> that, there was a lot more to that story. Yeah, but that was. <laughs> that was somebody that um, had to hire someone to put his septic in and then was trying to do like a workers' comp claim that because he could, was out on comp, he had to pay somebody to install a septic that he, that he would have done himself if he could do it, if he wasn't hurt. So they should pay for his septic. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I ruined his dreams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love to see how that works out. It's not that was somebody out. calling from down south and, you know, mm -hmm. he started talking to either in North Carolina, but he threw him in Plymouth. But we talk fast up here. How y'all doing? I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? Okay, good. Um, anything else? Um, Pressing? Facilla Drive. Yeah, that's actually next up, and I believe... Yeah, um, he's just he said... Uh, you just want to listen? He just wants to listen to Okay. Him. So we're just looking for an update. So I asked Lisa, you know, if she went by there today, she said she went by again today. Mm -hmm. um, it just keeps getting smaller. The pile keeps getting smaller. <laughs> I don't know if... Um, Mr. Miller was able to talk to Mr. Wood. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Mr. Wood was in last week. Al Jr. was in last week, and he said he's like up to his eyeballs, and yeah. Alligator is busy. So I don't mm -hmm. know if they have a, if they have a touch base. Well, can I ask a question? At our last meeting, I requested a letter be sent to the abutters who actually initiated you got the, the letter, complaint. Right? No, and I, yeah, I sent a copy to the Millers, and, and I haven't heard from you. Didn't the, did you have any no response, no response in regards to the letter right. of where things were at? Okay, perfect. Come in a little further if you'd like. So, Mr. Miller, um, thank you for all your efforts. 
um, publicly, I would like to ask a question. When did our law, or bylaw for manure, actually come into play? Uh, 2003. Okay. I, I have a copy in that pile. There's a, um, below the, below the, mm -hmm. yeah, there are two. One is 2000, it's not in the 2000, but it appears in the 2003 handbook mm -hmm. okay. for regulations. So, am I correct to state that up until the, the year 2003, there was nothing there was no in our bylaws no, or restrictions on It was just about manure. compost, basically. They were used, when we were smaller, the town, um, a lot of the people used compost mm -hmm. or they, they gave it to gardeners or things like that, but we've grown so large now. Mm -hmm. that well, I guess I guess one of the statements that had been made was is that it was twenty five years in the well, making. Where you get the horses, Mr. Miller? Wild, Did you have so. wild. wild. But yeah, up until two thousand and three. That's when you got the horses. Fourteen years ago. When did you get the horses? I thought you built that barn in like nineteen eighty. No. I was after that. Well, that's just. Oh, mm -hmm. Might be. That's no, just, actually, you know, might be right. Uh, yeah, yeah. still a drive. No, it, it's. We I have, remember. <laughs> The, and if I remember correctly, with the livestock and the manure, it was when we started getting to the point where the town started developing and then we were getting build-ups and that's when they made that. A lot of um, a lot of the farms at that, start, at that point started connecting with the farmers in town. Remember Grandpa Tom's mm -hmm. on 36? Mm -hmm. In 92, they used, the get, they used to get uh, manure from one of the farms. Mm -hmm. and Fields. Right. So there was there there was no up until two thousand and three nothing. You could do whatever you wanted. Whatever you wanted. So there were no there were no, there were no restrictions. Right. So I just want to correct <coughs> the record about the keeping of manure, a manure regulation for the town of Pembroke. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, it's shortened, in my opinion, the time frame. From 2003 to 2017, when the first complaint came in, which is a total of 14 years. I I believe, that Mr. Miller's and Butters. I don't believe that they made a. I don't believe that their argument was that the pile was quote unquote legally there for 25 plus years. And I might be speaking out of turn. I think they made the their argument was that the pile ex has existed there for 25 years. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a fine line. Am I allowed, Madam Chair? I know Mr. Miller is here, and I don't believe that we called him to speak before the board. Am I allowed to ask him a question? I would I would allow that. Okay. You can recognize him. Yes. Yeah, I Mr. Miller, yes. first of all, thank you for continuing to get the pile, shrinking the pile, although it is substantial and it will take a long time. Have you had any uh, formal or informal conversations uh, with your neighbor in regards to progress or lack of progress being made? The complaint? None. None? None. None. First okay. time I ever had an issue was when I was called before you people. But I mean, since since you were here before the board a couple weeks ago, you haven't None. had any conversation with them? Okay. And have you been going to the recycling center? You've been making? Every week. Uh, one trip? Multiple trips. Multiple trips. That brings up a question, if I might ask, is... Um, Could you come a little closer? Yeah, I'm stay. a little hot of yeah, he, he doesn't want to get Oh, okay. Um, the, where we're asked to uh, dump, it, I see it's getting very tight there. Is there going to be a alternate plan for another dump area? That, oh, the recycle center? Yeah, that's filling up. Uh, well, I think I, that I that will that should be a question um, to the selectmen. I, can, I yeah. can check in with the selectmen tomorrow and see what the plan is. Um, they they actually handle the recycle center. Mm -hmm. So we'll uh, make a note to to reach out to them and, and I'll have Sheila get back to you directly. I have a letter from your next door neighbors, yeah. the Borak. Yes. And they um, the letter is from '92 saying they don't object to a horse or corral. Is the barn your second barn? Did you have something smaller beforehand? Yes. Okay. So that was in 92. 
and your then permit you're in for your bond, I believe, was in 2005. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 92. 2005. So. Yes. Okay. Well, um, and we signed off on that at that point. I think that this, um, if you could make copies of this, I don't think we need the 2000, but I think we definitely need the 2003. Yeah. I think that we should all have a copy of that so that we can refer back to it. Okay. We're going to be talking was, about livestock. There was a, there's another revised copy on that. On there's another the one in 2008. But yep. That's when we first started talking about yep, there is. manure. There is another copy. Oh, yeah, another, another, yeah, okay. This, yeah, well, I, a, I, in addition to that, okay. 2008. I think that it would be um, it would be who it would be who us all to have 2003 and 2008. You can email them. Sure. That way, each member has it because we are going to be bringing up livestock with a few of our other issues. Okay. So we can have nice reading material. Just a couple of questions for you. That, and I recall our meeting two weeks ago, you did ask our health agent, Ms. Cullity, to send us a copy of the letter. Did you see it? Or? I have not seen the letter. Okay. It's in, I just have file. Okay. It's in the and file. Sheila, I, and I think it's wonderful that you're maybe not speaking for, but doing your best to represent Lisa Cullity. Can you, do you happen to know the last time that she was at the property? This morning. The, this morning, yeah. thank you. Okay. Because she was going down to Priscilla Drive anyway. And I said, well, you're there. Because right. I have a folder on this. Here's a copy. Yeah, let's copy open. the one in the folder. I can. Okay, yeah. Did you want to see it before you sent it? You just no, wanted a copy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I am going to ask for a copy, of, an actual copy of that. Yeah. So that way I can keep it, because I'm keeping a log. I would ask a, a final question for me. I'm not speaking for the entire board, but I'm asking, would you have any problem if I were to stop down just to take a look at, you know, when I, when I hear people use adjectives that Kyle has significantly been, I, I'd like to see it, but I wanted to ask you if you're okay with that. Uh, absolutely. Me too? Oh. Absolutely. Because I, I actually saw it. Yeah, and okay. you can go at any time. Okay. We're just going to yeah, take a peek. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to let me know. Yeah. 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 Would you want us to call and give you a heads up or just you're okay with that? Yep. Okay. Fabulous. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So uh, that one, we're moving right along. We have significant progress. Thank you. You're welcome. So I think Shane? He's not, we're not, not ready. ready. Yeah. No, I, you don't want to stay here all night. Um, I'm going to make a, a. I'm going to allow you to speak before seven o'clock. That way you can have get out of here sooner. Get my How's that and sound? Everything. How's that sound? Okay. All right, come on Coach. up here. We don't have Lisa. Okay. So let's see if you can. Get the local. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, you, Shane McClone, you know everybody, right? Hey, Shane, how are you? How are you? Shane, how are you? Okay. Just okay. a little. So here we are on the Road. Mm -hmm. And um, Claire Richards is uh, hoping to sell her house. And because of that, we are replacing the septic system. And is, as you can see, it's a 50 by 100 lot that's extremely small. Mm -hmm. So what we're proposing to do is put in a 1,500-gallon tank and this 8.5 um, by 30-foot leaching bed. The variances, that's why I'm here, are to make the septic tank only 5 feet from the house instead of the 10, mm -hmm. and the uh, leaching 14 feet instead of the required 20. But other than that, it fits right in there. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Septic tank five to ten. I think I have anything wrong with the machine. Is there? A, I know you get stairs down here, stairs down here. Are no. Anticipating no. Like building anything in that backyard? No, it's pretty much. Yeah, and there's no existing deck there now. No. That's the bulkhead. Okay. And is this a solid foundation or one of those dirt? 
it's crawl toes. partially crawl and partially dirt. Mm -hmm. um, this out here is a full, full foundation, and this part back here is, um, say, less than full. Like rock and yeah, the old, the old yeah. school foundation. The old kind, exactly. Did it fail Title Five? I'm assuming so. I'm not sure how I got there in the first place. Also. Okay. Was there a system or was it accessible? Um, the, yeah, there's a there's was accessible. It, accessible. Yeah. it was accessible. Yes, exactly. right. It was originally accessible. Okay. Which we don't have an automatic fail yeah. in Unless, the town of Pembroke on cesspools, but. But maybe in the future we will. Yeah, that's not my idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's on this board's agenda. Yeah, we changed. <laughs> yeah. Um, and just, you know, I actually have a cesspool, so I know. Uh -oh. I know I'm going to be voting yes, yes <laughs> against myself, so no worries. Um, so is there a deed restriction being put on this? Um, there's typically not a deed restriction associated with these variants. Awful close to the house. It's really sort of up to you. I mean, when it comes down to it, anything from this house that goes downstairs to the building department, they're going to have a copy of this and they're going to see exactly how close everything is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the end, it is it is a two bedroom leeching here. So, is this really so actually, you're right. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, mm -hmm. that alone could could kick it into that. It's a deed restriction. Yeah. I, I, right. yeah, I think a deed restriction right. should be placed on. Sure. They're going to be selling it fairly soon, so that easily can be accommodated with the uh, with the, the yeah, take care of with that. the passings. Mm -hmm. sure. So where are the variances again? Mm -hmm. Five and ten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, <laughs> well, a professional. <laughs> he got all excited that he could go. He could go early. Do we put in the motion if we're making one about the deed restriction? Yes. Okay. I would like it on that. All right. So I'm going to make a motion on 20 Hatch Street to approve the plans before us with the two variances, and I would like to add a deed restriction on in the motion that the property remains a two-bedroom home and cannot be expanded further. Can we hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. Shall I? Okay. 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 Great. Do you okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a nice night. Have a nice night. Thanks, I will. Thanks, Gary. Bye-bye. Bye, Shane. All right, back to Ms. Schiller. Um, oh, I think I'm done. You think you're done? <laughs> okay. I'm not going to talk about the no variances for new construction. Right, and that's, right. Something, that's something that we were going to have Lisa talk to us about. Um, I don't know if the board would like to hear more information in regards to new construction. But well, new construction, you know, there, there's bylaws and rules and regulations about new construction having to be an acre and a half, minimum of an acre and a half. Is that what it is now? Mm -hmm. Which is going to cure our problem with these small lots and the restrictions on these small lots with the septics. Yeah, and unfortunately Moving the small forward. lots, yeah. Right. The small lots. Um, so our house is, a, like my house is 0 0.92, so it's not conforming? Existing not conforming? If yeah, I think all the new construction for developments have to consist of, let me rephrase that, at least an acre to an acre and a half. That's not going to solve a problem with the 5,000 square foot lots because no. those aren't going to All the way down in front colony. All exactly. Right. Yes. So, um, so I, I incline, I really think this is a good variant. I put good by law. Thank you, Gary. Listen, my brain's on. Um, for 
as to, I think this would eliminate a lot of the problems for any, of any addressing new construction because it will be right on target as far as what the variance is, what the restrictions are. But um, we're definitely going to have to maintain some kind of um, being able to help the residents out with the ones that are falling into trouble with the, their, their lack of square footage. Exactly. I'd like to ask a question. I'm not sure if I should be addressing it to you, Madam Chair, or you, Sheila, who typed up the the actual agenda. So when I see the Pembroke, <coughs> excuse me, Pembroke Local Regulation Topics Discussion, so this is one of what I'm calling, and forgive my uh, sarcasm, uh, this is part of the Gang of 13, those original questions. I, I understand that. And we'll be expanding that, I'm sure, in the next year. So I understand the question, should we maintain the policy of no variances for new construction? We've, we've talked about it a teeny bit, and I'm sure we'll explore that further two weeks from now. What I'm looking for clarity on is the second sentence, should we outline a vote to clarify no footings within 10 feet of the separate component? We currently have, that's part of the bylaws n now, I believe, that no footings are without, allowed within 10, foot of, 10 feet of the septic component. So I'm just a little confused when it says, should we vote to clarify? I mean, uh, so was the thought that we're, not, we're currently not clear enough? Or I, uh, uh, So I, I picked this up right off out of the thing. So I didn't, I didn't write this. This is right off you know, the list that we had of what, you know. 13. Sure, the Gang of 13. The Gang of 13. Okay. Which I think it's probably up around 15 or 16 right. now. Yeah. But, right. um, So I, I, I don't, I'm not, you know, Lisa wrote that, so I'm not sure what she was doing. Because everybody that comes here, I say it's 10 feet. You know, and if you want to go closer than 10 feet, then you got to come over the Then board. you have to come in front in front of the board. Right. Um, I just wonder if, we, if, if, if there's in writing that Lisa felt that it wasn't clear enough. That's all I was asking. I'm, I'm thinking the way that she worded this, she wanted this to go with the new construction and then absolutely no footings within 10 feet of any septics to, to reiterate the policy for no variances. That's the way I'm proceeding now. Find the, the, I'm sorry. That she wanted to make I'm, sure I'm that listening, the 10, I'm the listening, 10 feet were in there. To find that the, that's, um, there's not going to be a variance. I think it's currently in there. I, I, I don't know. That's why. I read some more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, well, the topic will be on our agenda two weeks from now. Correct. When we right. Some and and, and so. I, I think that, you know, I think that we should table this one okay. so that we can have it explained into, because it has been broken into two statements and allow it to go, let's table that and put that on the next meeting that Lisa can discuss with us. The other topic, I think, for well, that the was part, part of the routine where you, you talk about one. Mm -hmm. and then yeah, and I think we just need clarity from the health agent mm -hmm. in regards to those, and maybe seeing what the what the current bylaw looks like. Yes, I think that would help yes. us as a as a group. The next topic: Should we be taking a more active or pro? slash proactive role in the opioid use and prevention, marijuana use prevention, tobacco use prevention, if so, how? So that's kind of a discussion point. I think that, as you all know, I actually sit as a Board of Health representative on PTAP, mm -hmm. which is Pembroke Titans Against Drugs. Um, there's a lot of good proactive um, use and resources that they're gathering and getting the dear officer into the schools and, and discussion on that. Marijuana use prevention goes hand in hand with the opioids, um, so it's being worked on. Um, the tobacco use prevention, we are dealing with that Absolutely. because we next up will be T21. So, and you are actually, which, what board are you sitting on? Um. We haven't met in quite a while, but I was on what we were calling the uh, Q4, which was the marijuana 
uh, <coughs> question. So I'm not sure if if we're if we'll be continuing because the, the primary purpose of that subcommittee was to discuss whether Pembroke mm -hmm. wants to um, be a town that bans retail shops and marijuana. So whether and I, I think we, I'd have to and hear from the chief. Yeah. So I don't know if we're going to continue on and, and take up topics along the lines of marijuana prevention, or if that was the main purpose of the of our subcommittee. Would so, you Would you um, reach out to yeah, the chief follow, and, and follow up with us yeah, for the I next will. meeting? I can report on the next meeting. You know, because I know that that was strictly for the question, um, which has passed. Um, for the third time, um, so I think that we definitely are using an active. We are taking a more active role as the board of health. Yeah. Do you want to have? Do so you want to replace on? that question? Oh. I'm sorry. Do you want to replace that question for the next topic? Do you want to do something else? I mean, because you really actually have a kind of. Go. Yeah. What we're going to do is have an update from Gary in regards to um, if that. Um, yeah, the Q4. The Q4, if that was going to, if that's going to now turn into another type of a group that has a mission statement. What that next mission statement is, I don't know. And I can actually give you an update. Um, we don't meet until the third week, when, third Wednesday of every month. I'll give you an update on where we are at. Pembroke Titans. Pembroke Titans against drugs. How often do you meet? I meet once a month. Once a month. The third Wednesday of the month. We meet at the um, library. And if anybody is so inclined to replace me and get on that board for the Board of Health, please let me know. Okay. Are, are you looking to I'm not, but okay. I you know, if any if there is something you'd like to become more active in, mm -hmm. please feel free. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I would consider that, but I want to see where our committee is going. Okay. Thank you for right. that. Okay. So why don't we get, for next meeting, an update from Gary in regards to that, and Donna will, re um, I won't be reporting next meeting because we won't have had our next meeting. But for, you know, the topics about the regulation updates, do you want well, we're going right now. We're going right now to to T twenty one the final regulation. All right, so by next meeting, you're not going to add a different thing from the list. No. Um, yeah. What's the next one on the list? Well, I don't. We kind we skipped over uh, animal license fees. I don't know if you want to go back to that. I would love to go back to animal, animal license fees, fees. Okay. where we're dealing with manure and um, we are now a right to farm. I right. think that we really need to look at those because that just opened up. Truly, what it did is it allowed that there's no nuisance you complaints. You the voted town meeting. Mm-hmm. The voted town meeting. Um, the right to farm. The only thing that it gave were the owners of livestock the prevention of anybody complaining about the noise. Okay. So, Mr. Chu, sorry. You know, it's just we are a right to farm community now. So if the roosters. I, I, well, I'm sure the regulations still are valid, but if you you know buy a house next to a, a horse farm and then all of a sudden decide you don't like the smell of horses, mm -hmm. there's nothing you know. Right. It's a right to farm. Right. The horse farm still has to take care of the manure. Correct. And, and you know keep everything clean. But Correct. They have to keep it clean, but now people can. And with the roost, with the is, complaints. yeah, I mean, but even, it, yeah, but yeah, the roost is not going to follow under the noise variance law of 7 to 10. Right. And he's getting up at 5. <laughs> but we are so right to we farm. Are, yeah, we, we are, are right, right to, to farm, farm now. Right. Which, um, I'm sorry, Gary, go no, ahead. Go, no, go ahead. I, I think that um, I'll actually Google it, what it means, right to farm. Okay. Because I think we should all be well mm -hmm. versed in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think the neighbors of an, and Mr. Chu was an old case about a, a rooster that we had in Pembroke. I don't. I don't think the. I don't believe the right to farm prevents the neighbor from raising concerns about Mr. Chu. 
perhaps perhaps that perhaps this less enforcement mm -hmm. that they anyone can still come forth to the Board of Health with Correct. concerns mm -hmm. about farm animals and, right. and such. But the legality of it will stand on the fact that we are a right to farm. It doesn't change the regulations. You can't have nuisance animals. So if your rooster's baller and someone, then you've got to do something about your rooster. Mm -hmm. He's got to get a really nice house with shades. Mine went to a farm. Mm -hmm. With shades. <laughs> Okay. T21 final regulation acceptance. We all got that. Mm -hmm. Everybody got that, correct? Yep. Okay. Have we all read it? Yes. Super. Um, it is uh, going, it's being entered into um, public record. So it will be part, if anybody is interested in taking a look at this. Um, we do have to, I think we all three have to sign the final yes. copy. And I think we decided that um, T21 was going to go into effect August 1st. First. First. August 1st. August 1st. August 1st. That way it gives enough time for each establishment to be notified and get everything in order. So as written, this came from the state, from um, well, Sabara. Sheila Sabara. Sabara. She's, no, it doesn't work for the state. She works for um, the tobacco and uh, Mojave or whatever. One of those Mass Association of Health Boards. Yeah, M A H B. Yeah, M A H B. Yeah. Madam Chair, I, I don't think you were ahead of the curve per se, but I think when we were discussing T twenty one, you were a frequent commenter that you know at some point the state is going to follow suit, and um, you know I'm I'm seeing more. It seems the last couple of weeks I saw on Boston Herald Radio. They were definitely, Stanley Rosenberg, head of the State House, or State Senate, was talking about they're getting pretty close. So, mm -hmm. not that it was all for naught. I think we had a healthy discussion in the town of Pembroke. We had some of the vape shops, we had citizens come in, but it seemed, I get a sense, and you know, like I said, you're ahead of me on this, but I get a sense that we will, as a state, probably be going to T21, I will say very soon, but we're getting there. But I, yeah. but I still think our efforts were, uh, well worth, well worth it. Yes, they were. And I think the, the, the steps that we took as a board in allowing pros, cons to be able to come in and to speak about it, um, you know, I've said several times I, I was very, um, very disillusioned that there weren't any town people, residents, <laughs> that came in to speak of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it's an important issue that we had to deal with, and we're going to take the step by before the state. So um, in front of us we have the regulations for the Pembroke Board of Health restricting the sale of tobacco products. I'd like to make a motion that we accept this going into effect as of August 1st, 2017. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so I'm going to send this down the line. Shall be guys. Mm -hmm. No, not Ben Herbert. I did church twice this week. So, Joseph. Been referred to as Mimnus many a time. Okay, so um, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Plastic bag initiative. Uh, I noticed in the newspaper, um, mm -hmm. all three of us made a comment, which I was. I'm thrilled to see. Really? I didn't see it yet. Oh, it was in last week's manager. You got some good ink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got ink. Everybody got ink. We kind of all well, get a mariner. Mm -hmm. um, Sheila, I'm going to leave this in this one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Leave it like that. Looking at Survey Monkey, actually, the um, newspaper, uh, Adam um, from Wicked Local. We actually sent over to him the survey questions as well as the responses. So hence, which is how he started his article and then he interviewed or talked to all three of us. You were kind enough to give us at the last meeting information that you had come up with. Pros and cons. Correct. 
I read through them. I I think this one is really for me too close to call. I don't want to get into restricting. I definitely think that styrofoam should go away. It's my own opinion. Grocery I bags. Um, and I know you had you gave out a sheet on styrofoam. On, on styrofoam well. Yes, and, and it's that really that not a big. It's not a really big thing. Um, but that seemed to be the one question mm -hmm. that had wasn't even. Right. It was not even at all. No, it wasn't. Um, but to go back to the very beginning part of this, I mean, if you're looking at the grocery bags that we're now selling so that we can um, save the environment, mm -hmm. um, it's got to be used 131 times before it becomes biodegradable for the land fund. So mm -hmm. That's three years of mm -hmm. using a bag, mm -hmm. where the plastic bags right now um, account for just 5% of the United States solid waste. Mm -hmm. Um, where where is that information from? This oh, was this from the state. Been, uh, You're saying where is it in the survey? This form or, or what's no, the source what, what, of the, the source? The source. The source is state. The source is state. Okay. Wait, the source is the state. Mm -hmm. Ma Massachusetts Emergency Protection Agency, U.S. Emergency Administration. Administration. Environmental Protection. Environmental resource planning. Well, it was put together. I mean, the website is a site, bagtheban.com. Mm -hmm. When I read this, mm -hmm. now, um, a, a lot of the things that I read about banning plastic bags, mm -hmm. I, I think what I read, and I feel that I look at a fairly good cross section of. Um, news material, whether it's online or the newspaper or the radio, but it seems most of when I read about banning plastic bags, the the argument is about bl banning the bags themselves. This one, when we received this from uh, fellow member Messina, <coughs> I found it to be particularly refreshing. I found there was some really cogent arguments made against not banning plastic bags. So. It was refreshing for me to read number one. Number two, I, there was a little yes. hesitation in it. Some of it felt like a little bit of corporate, corporate speak. Uh, I'm not saying they were twisting the words, but um, so there was cause for concern. Like I said, who was putting out all this material? But that being said, there are a few things that stood out for me. I'm going to the second page, um, the very first bullet. I'm going to read it for our audience at home. They talk about recycling as a growing industry that is having an impact. And it says that families can bring their plastic bags, sacks, and wraps to participating stores and drop them into a plastic bag recycling bin. Mm -hmm. Now, we all live in Pembroke, and we know that we can't recycle our plastic bags and put them in the bins. However, I mean, I fill my trunk up every week. I take all my plastic bags that my wife She'd probably kill me if she heard this, but she doesn't use paper. She uses plastic bags, and I throw them in my trunk, and I bring them to Walmart mm -hmm. at the Hanover Mall every single week. Mm -hmm. I actually went into Walmart the other day, and I went into customer service, being a pest that I am, and I said, what do you do with those plastic bags? And I got a manager, and she said, we recycle them. And I said, where do you take them? She said, I don't know. So like, she made a few phone calls, and I couldn't get an answer. Like she said, they go to some Walmart facility and they do something with them. So part of me said, geez, I hope they don't just get thrown out. But if these plastic bags are in fact being recycled, I mean, that's a good thing. I mean, we talk about we can't recycle plastic bags in Pembroke, but people, you can Correct. and you can bring them to... Stop and, the Stop and Shop has right, a box exactly. right there to return them. So... If, if you had read the article, I know you didn't get the newspaper yet, yeah. and Donna, if you read it fully, mm -hmm. one of the things that I had said to Adam when he called me, and this is a big issue, clearly it gets a strong response, positive or negative. What I had said in the article, and I didn't mention it last two weeks ago when we were talking about it, but I thought about maybe a subcommittee 
you know, seeing if we could maybe get some residents that would maybe take a look at this and just see, you know, much like I was on the Solid Waste and Recycling Subcommittee mm -hmm. before we bought, brought curbside recycling to the town. So I wanted to float it by you folks if you thought about maybe f seeing if we could get some residents who could do some research, look at the pros and cons, how it might work for Pembroke, and maybe they could bring that to us. That's just something Another I... Another thing I was thinking that also on top of what you said, um, what would be the probability of us um, putting a container or something down at the recycle center for those plastic bags? Where, where the residents could bring where them. Where the residents them. could bring them. Mm -hmm. okay. I would like... I, it I, would be a one-stop shop, mm -hmm. you know. It's not going to cost them any money. I don't know what the funds would be for to, for our cost, mm -hmm. but if we could get more information on how Walmart gets rid of their bags in a mm -hmm. distri distribution unit, I'd, li I'd like to ask. I'd like to ask Stop and Shop. They have the bin there. Where are they going? Are they in fact Perfect. recycling them, or are they throwing them away? Right. So you if know, they're recycling them, so let's find out what the facility is mm -hmm. and see if maybe that we could establish something down at the recycle center. So when people are dropping off their cardboard mm -hmm. or whatnot, mm -hmm. that they've got, if they've got a hundred bags saved, there's a place for And the other it. thing too is, is we can put a article on the town floor mm -hmm. and let the people of Pembroke vote yeah. what they want to do. Do they want to have plastic bags? Do they want to use cloth bags? Um, I don't see a lot of plastic bags floating around. I don't either. But, and, I, and next week I will bring in, because I had stopped at a stop and shop in another town, and right on the back says biodegradable. It's a different type of material. texture of a plastic bag. Do you have that bag? Huh? Do you have that bag? I, I, have, I saved that bag because I wanted to use it as a prop. Okay. So if something else can be made... If it's by if it can be biodegradable, why is not the environment or the, the why aren't we following suit with the biodegradable versus exactly. something that's going to take three years to break down exactly. the landfill? So I think at that point we'll bring plastic bags up again. Okay. Um, yeah. um, before we move on, I'm going to look for some reaction to my suggestion because I didn't hear either one of my fellow board members give a comment. And if it's a bad if it's a bad idea, that's okay. But I. You know, and when you mention town meeting, and I certainly respect the rights of the residents of Pembroke to have a say and, and come to town meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, town meeting isn't, you know, we, we all wish the town meeting was better attended. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly don't want to, and I don't think your suggestion, Donna, putting it in front of an article to town meeting is us taking a pass. I don't think you implied that, mm -hmm. nor do I think that. But I, I'd like to see the board you know, since I've been on the board for three years, we have never formed a subcommittee. And maybe, mm -hmm. maybe I'm not saying that I want to set precedent, but this is a big issue. And, I, and I'd like to, we got so many people on SurveyMonkey who responded and very strong. I'd like to see if we could, again, I'm going to repeat my mm -hmm. idea of forming a subcommittee, seeing if any residents want to do it. So I, I just, think, I'm going to ask the two of you what your thoughts were. My thought is I think that's a great idea and by by making a subcommittee discussing pros and cons, you therefore have something that can be put into an article that can be presented. Agreed. Right? Okay. So Correct. that's yes. I, I think it's a very positive step okay. in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I definitely think what you're thinking is huge. I think it's an it's an important next step. So maybe at our next meeting, mm -hmm. Madam Chair, we could put on the agenda discussing about the formation of the subcommittee and how we go out and attract or how we solicit people to get involved in this. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's um, a potential agenda item mm -hmm. two weeks from now? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Did everybody get a copy of this? Uh, takes but yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's the same company from. Mm, yeah. Mm. Um, office communication protocol. Uh, do we want to? 
do we want to keep talking about this, or do we think what? that the way that we're communicating and those points that had been presented, um, do we all feel comfortable with them at this point so that we could make some kind of a yay or nay on the office protocol? We did change one thing on there, but I would like to make a motion that we accept the office protocol as we have written. And I'm looking for the final. I need a better organizational. I didn't send that out because I thought there were like 15 copies already out there. There are already 15 copies out there. Um, here is the letter that we had. It has eight points. That was the official. Just asked that we all sign it. But I think it just makes our secretary's life and our lives easier. We know that we've had some communication issues in regards to the email system receiving. We can't control that, but we certainly can have a set protocol of communication with this office. I would like to... Mm -hmm. I would like to, I want to get the language correct. I don't want to amend your, mo actually, your motion is out there. I'm not going to say. Right, do I, have a, do I hear a second? Okay, so for without a second, it fails. So, we open it back up. Okay, having said that, I would like to make a motion that at our next Board of Health meeting that our secretary in the Board of Health, Sheila Landy, sits before the board and we discuss these bullet points. My, you know, I want to go back to, and, and I don't want to do something that we've already done, but Sheila, I kind of felt the last time we didn't really, this is just my own personal opinion, I don't feel that we went through all the bullet points and I'd like to hear you, and, and I'd like to hear you speak on each one and why you think they would be of value. So I, I don't think, from my own personal, I don't feel that we had a healthy discussion. I, I think Ms. McSweeney wasn't here at, at that particular meeting. And I would, I would like to hear you speak on these points and we have a discussion. So I'm certainly not against uh, accepting it. A discussion or a Spanish Inquisition? I'm sorry? A discussion. We'll go with the discussion. Oh, Spanish. No Spanish Inquisition. Yeah. You've so, gotta wait, you got to wait. You have to be here for that. <laughs> I will second that motion. Okay. Mm. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So we're going to bring that. Is that uh, put, yes. Aye. Yes. Sorry. Uh, let's keep talking about communication. <laughs> okay. The new business, the fluoride in our water. Um, we were all given for discussion purposes. Mm -hmm. The Board of Health submitted an article um, in 1969 um, that was to see if the town would raise and appro appropriate a sum of money to be extended to the direction of the Water Department for the purpose of buying and installing equipment to, meet, to meter fluoride in the town's water supply and to provide for such treatment or take action herein. That was article number 22 in 1969. It was voted by the people of Pembroke. If we go back in time in 1969, there was no fluoride. We all had cavities. We started drinking the water with the fluoride in it. I think what has come before us is the question, should we continue to put fluoride in our water? So I would like to make a motion that we Actually, there's a, um, a resident who gave us, gave me to present to the board on thyroid, low thyroid, that fluoride in the water affects that. I would like to ask um, that resident to come before us and speak. I'd also like to see if we can get a dentist to come in and speak. 
I think we should talk the, about this. The concerns on me, the dentist is going to um, be pro for the fluoride uh, the, for, for the children because this has been a very important part in, the te in our restoration of our teeth. Mm -hmm. I mean, when they came up with this, you know, mm -hmm. notice a lot, pe lot less people have dentures, mm -hmm. you know, at a certain age. Um, my concern it was from that article that I read, I believe it was from the UK or something like exactly. that. Exactly. It was out of state. I, I think that this is more, if we're going to talk about a health um, issue with this, this would be more for the medical professional, like a doctor, to tell us, number one, the person that, I, from my understanding, that was addressing this was an older person. So it was actually a younger person. It was a younger person. Under the age of 30. Really? Mm-hmm. It did, was there somebody in their life that they had? Their doctor, um, from what I understand from the conversation, which is why I would like him to come in, um, was the fact that it was thought to have an effect on why there is a, a she has a low thyroid. Low thyroid. Right. That it, it would be affecting Condition. thyroids right. in the adults. Right, and the problem is we're not drinking water right like we used to we've 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 yeah. kind of moved on right and dentists give fluoride treatment um they now cover the molars with a fluoride substance that hardens so right. that they don't get cavities so that was what the thought process was is that it was needed back then correct is it still needed now i'd also like to know how much this fluoride costs that we're at. Um, I actually got that. I'm not sure what I did with it, Donna. But I That's do okay. have I do have the literature. I, I did um, get the page on what, what it's costing the town at this point. Great. Well then um, why don't we do this? Why don't we have you submit that to Sheila? Okay. Let's add fluoride in our water um, to the next meeting. And I'd like to table the tick guy for right now. Uh, that was just an informational thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Lisa's working on it. He wants to come and give a presentation at the high school, like an auditorium. In the auditorium. I'm really. Um, Pembro. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Not to us. Is he going to charge us? No, he's just very excited. He's very excited. Okay. About chips. Yeah. Well, they they're very very dangerous. Um, they, they, they're so much more than lime. There's yeah. Other things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so uh, Lisa can update you on that. All right. Um, How many households do we have in Pembroke? Uh, we have, what, about 7,000, 6,500, 7,000? I don't want to say. I do not know that. Somewhere in between that range. I don't know how many households range. we have. We have roughly 20,000 residents in Pembroke and, and approximately 12,000 registered voters. Mm -hmm. And if on the... Um, because I used to do... But I asked, I asked her how many houses we had. Well, um, when I used to do the municipal uses fee, we had, I think it was 6,026. So I'm going to say we probably got new construction, nine, maybe right? another couple hundred. So even if you say 6,000, that information that you handed out, one of, them, one of the pieces of it, bullet points was the fee, which is $5 a household that Pembroke wants to be part so we've had six thousand. Huh? So even if you if you you know when you said it was at six thousand. Yeah. It was like six thousand twenty six or something. Six thousand times five dollars a household. Mm -hmm. It's thirty grand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we know that we can we, we we have no money. Um, but if he would like to speak, I don't I don't think we have any right to deny him to speak. Well, we should encourage him. To. We should encourage yeah. him. I think it's important, and there are a lot of companies also now out there who spray for ticks that advertise mm -hmm. that they will come and spray your yard for ticks. Um, actually, I pulled one off of me a couple weeks ago. Um, Miss Define had one a couple weeks ago. Um, My husband had one yesterday. Yeah. Honestly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, let's let's leave tick. The tick guy. Yep. Sure. He's looking to try and get in at the end of June. So I got I got to track down with Lisa with that stance. Mm -hmm. So I I suspect when he comes to the high school, was it the high school? Yeah. He, well, he wants a big he wants a big 
Okay. Well, we can't promise know, him but that it, that's it, our it, problem. We cannot. Um, we can't make him call. Him. We can't make him come. I mean, we can't make the people come. Um, we can only put out, you know, an educational seminar is being held. But yeah, we I can, we can work on that next week. Yeah, and I, I, I don't think he's going to get the auditorium. We may be able to use the large, reserve the large conference room in the library, in the town library. Because I don't think he's going to pack it. I mean, I know. I mean, we can't he, pack it. He's looking to do it through the town as opposed to doing through the school system. When he makes, if he makes the presentation, he's not looking to make yeah, it to the, the school. Yeah, the gentleman that was trying to set it up for this guy to come, I have his name over there somewhere. But he, he was going to contact the school directly to see if the auditorium was available. Yeah, you know, he was going to talk, contact the superintendent's office. Um, all right, well, let's find out what he wants to do, okay? Um, you know, there is definitely um, Tick Smart. If anybody is interested in going to www.tickencounter.org to read about ticks, um, which we all should be aware of at this point. Um, scoop the poop. I just like, <laughs> put the link out on the... Uh, you have that? Yeah. Yeah, I put the link out on the website. Uh, Thank but I you. I have a link to Water Smart South Shore because there's other now, interesting things out there. Does gonna... this go back to the pool back, um, bags? And stuff? Well, it, yeah, you had brought that up and had questioned whether we do it as a town. There, the In the um, town clerk's office, there are pamphlets in regards to the fact that just because an animal poops in the woods yeah. doesn't mean that you shouldn't be picking, picking it, up it up because there are ramifications to the environment of it being left there right. as to a, and also to a health issue. Uh, Lisa was going to check into and find out the answer for you in regards to whether that program can be reinstated. Yes, because DPW actually put the program out. Yep. And they, they, did, they put boxes with bags. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that if people were down at the fields, they'd mm -hmm. be down at the playground, that, that they would right. be, you know, the herring run. I, right. I remember it being put in right. a and she had, she had said that she had thought that it had ceased only because they were picking the barrels up on a regular basis. Okay. So they were getting heavy. way too heavy. She <laughs> wants to get the rain yeah. water in these open containers. So Okay. Um, um, with that being said. So that was in DPW. Would you like me to question to ask them what's going on with that as, as well well talking to you you we you asked Lisa to okay. look into that so she should give us an update okay. on that but if you want to do your own okay querying poop I'm not going to stop you Donna I think you made a fantastic point and I actually have a dog and I believe that you do as well yes I do I, I do too okay mm -hmm. three actually I, I just you read in the paper the other day 44 percent of households in this country have a have a dog at least mm -hmm. one so that's that's quite a lot of pets I, I I can only speak for myself you know when my dog uses the bathroom outside I always pick it up but when I'm in the woods mm -hmm. and I don't mm -hmm. and, and um, I don't know <laughs> okay I don't know about it's you a two. matter of training and getting in with I started doing it, and honest to gosh, I didn't pick it up until we were in Martha's Vineyard maybe about seven or eight years ago. And some woman brought her dog over into the parking lot and had the dog poop and leave it there. Mm -hmm. And I go, and then I started putting black baggies in my... my mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And a lot as, of people use the as plastic as said, bags, right. but the plastic yeah, bags right. to be able to put yeah. it, you just scoop it up in the bag and flip it over, throw it away. Exactly. I mean, so the, the point that I was making is, I I think we as residents are more aware and more conscious and concerned of our neighbors, and we are picking up poop on the sidewalk or on our neighbor's lawn. But if people are going mm -hmm. in the woods, and and I don't know if. You know, I'm not suggesting we do an educational campaign, but right. it would be nice if we could get, if we could change the paradigm of people in Pembroke to start picking up their dogs' messes mm -hmm. everywhere, and you know, create that paradigm shift. I don't know how we do that, but mm -hmm. I was just because I would need to change. That's myself. a very big family. Yeah. <laughs> so. Anyway. So um, 
as a reminder, our next Board of Health meeting is going to be scheduled for June 5th. Mm -hmm. Uh, at this point, unless there's anything else that anyone would like to discuss, can I get a motion to adjourn? Let's make a motion to adjourn. What time is it? At 7.39. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night. Wonderful.